Good morning. Morning, people. Good morning, Stuart, Marlon, Diane, hi Thomas, Stephen, Jacqueline, Karen, Rab, hi good morning to you too, you'll be busy, morning Ruth, morning Lynn, Alex, Alan, morning John, Diane, Robert, Stuart, Stephen, morning Mr Milligan, that's my partner in crime tuning in this morning, Friday he's due another, he's due another vlog himself, right we're up to the 100 mark, let's get this broadcast underway, Sort this thing out, my electric manager. Right, break started, 30 minutes to try and battle this one in, folks. Okay, so here we go, we're going to, it's in the truck, Davey, in the truck. Coming to you today from Edinburgh, the outskirts of Edinburgh. I'm at Newbridge, where it is overcast and 20 degrees. Um, so, there you have it. That's your weather forecast for a Newbridge in Edinburgh. You want to know what the weather's like where you are? Look at the bloody windy. <laughs> Okay, right, let's get on with this coronavirus update. These are the figures for the 9th to the 9th, 2021. <coughs> Tested in Scotland, the pandemic reached their shores, 2,912,655, and that was plus 20,748 new individuals tested from Wednesday to Thursday. Tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores, 487,654, and that's plus 6,836 new cases up again it didn't in the five thousands the last couple of days in hospital there are 928 covid patients and that's up 25 hospitalizations are becoming more common um of which 87 are in the intensive care units and that's up five vaccinated four million one hundred thirty thousand six hundred and six people in scotland have had the dose of the vaccine okay an increase of two thousand seven hundred and 65 from Wednesday to Thursday. Of that 4,133,606 people, 3,000,000 people have had the dose of the vaccine. People in Scotland have had both jags. An increase of 7,570 from, sorry about that, <laughs> from Wednesday to Thursday. The GPS system's point up the day, folks. Um, it has the day we um, access to Eurosat. Right, anyway, where were we? Aye. That was an increase of 7,570 for Wednesday to Thursday. 82.6% of all over 16s in Scotland are now fully vaccinated. Okay, deaths. I'm sorry to report there was an additional 12 deaths to COVID recorded from Wednesday to Thursday, and that takes the daily total to 8,210. Community and hospital deaths combined sat at 10,612. But we already know there's another 30, at least he won that. Right, let's move on to news reviews. Thursday started with three themes in the rags. The hike in national insurance contributions. And Pretty Patel's plans to break international and maritime law. And vaccine passports. On the hike into national insurance, um, the, uh, the fallout and the uh, who gets hit hardest is the subject of debate. The poorest in society will bear the brunt of the, the rise. Third sector think tanks are publishing reports after report saying that the, this regressive tax will plunge even more people into poverty. A perfect storm is brewing. Fuel prices are up, meaning petrol and diesel. Electricity has gone up. Gas has gone up. Food price inflation is coming into play, so food prices are going up. And a hey, council tax rises earlier in the year, and that's just in Scotland. You know, in England, it's worse. They even had a hike to prescription charges. Austerity 2.0 is here, and it's not good. And then we throw in, of course, the reduction in tax credit payments per £20 a week, and we have the perfect storm brewing. 
absolutely un uh, unbelievable. But none of this makes economic sense. In a consumer economy, I don't know how many times I've said this, but in a consumer economy, it requires consumers to have money in their pockets. Otherwise, the economy contracts. The Conservative government are taking money out of the pockets of the mass population, which means there's less money to be spent into the economy, so the economy will contract. This is economic suicide, and it's political madness, and it's been done deliberately, and it's cruel. But it's very hard to believe the economic policy is being carried out at the present time when we know that we have a consumer-driven economy. It makes no sense. Right, the second man, Pretty Patel's moved to turn back boats in the channel. Um, a, you know, it's a breaking down. It's breaching international law. International law is quite queer. If somebody's in distress at sea, you must rescue them. All right. Anyway, our whole plan's breaking down. The French are no are no no having any yet, and the uh, the border uh, border force want Patel to sign off on every mission personally, so that if anything goes t uh, barely up, then we can uh, uh, the blame buck and uh, the blame in the buck stokes right at our door. So this uh, turning these boats back in the channel is just not going to work. But the question is, what's next? They're going to put a floating wall up. Mental cases, ah. It's about Trumpian, you know. Now, as to COVID passports, to COVID passports, well, it was speculation in the morning on whether it got through or no. And the papers, we know later in the day it did, but we'll get to that, all right. So Thursday, Thursday started with an opinion poll out on Scottish independence. The poll puts yes on 51% and no on 49%. This is the first poll since April to put yes in front. <coughs> The numbers are still in the margin of errors, of course. But you've got to remember, commercial polls are easily manipulated. All you do is manipulate the question to get the answer you want. All right, but what was interesting about that poll was, a, um, you know, it shows Labour bombing in Scotland under poverty by Sarwa. Uh, if I remember right, and I haven't wrote this down, but I'm, I'm sure this, these were the figures when I was reading it yesterday, the SNP are now in 51% of public support. The Tories are doing to 27% of public support. And the Lib Dems have got 5%, the Greens have got 6 and Labour's got 12. Labour are bombing. Uh, Sarwar's managed to lose them another 5 percentage points in the polls. Hey, you're doing well, there's poverty, ain't he? Love them. Really love them. Right, well, let's move on. Um, me. Hey, moving on, Thursday, Westminster Transport Minister Grant Sharp hey, um, rebuffs calls for hey, retailers, hauliers and the hey, academics to open up the immigration system to special hey, visas for drivers, um, people who work in the processing, food processing industry and for people who work in agriculture. Anyway, Grant Sharp says no. He says, we have to learn to store in marine two feet and we have to fill these jobs we're in. And then he goes on to admit that at the end of furlough, mass unemployment's coming. Because he says, furlough's come to an end, we'll be able to fill these jobs then. So there you have it, folks. Those who were in decent jobs and on furlough, who won't be getting taken back on, are going to be expected to pick crops, be butchers, and drive bloody lorries. Or skilled jobs and skilled jobs that none of them are bloody well got. They're picking the crops, you've got to know how to pick each individual crop and it's back breaking work. Food processing and the meat plants and things like that, highly specialist work, it's generally butchers that do it. Takes a couple of years to train somebody to take a carcass and cut it up into the different joints and cuts of meat that you see in your supermarket shelf. You know, and the ACV drivers, you don't just jump in one of these babies and batter off down the road as if it's one of your motors. It's not that bloody simple. It shows you how really, really stupid these buggers are. But Grant Sharp actually admits that there's mass unemployment coming at the end of the furlough scheme. Wow. How's that for a, a cracker? Couldn't he make it up? Unbelievable. Right. So, moving on. Thursday. It looks like the DUP are about to crash the power sharing agreement in Northern Ireland. 
Sir Geoffrey Donaldson is hardening the DUP stance on the NI protocol, so direct drill could be coming. But direct drill will suit Westminster. I've said this many times. Westminster was trying to offload Northern Ireland since 1986. The start of the negotiations for the Good Friday Agreement. At the start of the negotiations of the Good Friday Agreement, they were that cop sure they'd get a Good Friday Agreement in place. They started withdrawing money for, for, for Northern Ireland. And they slowly run Northern Ireland down to the point where it's now an, industri a, an agricultural economy again. Right? Um, the NI uh, economies are we in trouble now. And they're starting to look over the border at the better lifestyle that they have in the south. And another thing, at the beginning of Brexit, NI was getting supermarket shortages because all the supermarket, all the food was coming for the central distribution centres here in the central belt of Scotland. I've explained all this. All the big central distribution centres here would take trailers down to Stranra and drop them and they would go across. Well, what's happened now is because of Brexit, the Northern Irish um, uh, supply chain has now um, realigned itself with the Southern Irish supply chain and the bigger market of 450 million people in Europe. So, you know, NI isn't it just being shoved out the door. It has already started realigning itself with the South. And we spoke about the differences in the NHSs in the past. Well, you know, the South, they... they they nationalised their NHS during COVID and I don't think they're going to put it back in private hands. So that takes the last major barrier of um, reunification at the road. 68% of people out there want a, want a border poll. Direct rule will make it easier for that border poll to take place. It'll make it much easier for that border poll to take place. So, so Jeffrey Donaldson is making a, an absolute uh, fool of himself if he thinks withdrawn for the... Um, from the Stormont Assembly will, will aid the Unionist port, uh, uh, position in uh, Northern Ireland because it's no gone. It just isn't gone. Even Unionist businessmen are looking at it and saying, a market of 550 million people across the water there who are skint, or a market of 450 million people in Europe who are no skint, you know, makes better sense for them to trade that way. Even Unionist businessmen are looking that way. That means the Raven lunatics are going to lose. That's the, the DUP nutters and things like that. Northern Ireland's already real, realigning itself to uh, Europe. So, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson is making a, an absolute fool of himself if he thinks crashing the storm on assembly is going to get him or the DUP what they want. It's no. Right, moving on. Thursday lunchtime rolls round and First Minister's questions is on. First up was Dross. Dross went in the NHS. And talk about a Wayne, enjoy him watching his pal for her and laughing at him because the glee he had in his eyes at the problems that our NHS have was unbelievable. Eventually he broke down into a raving lunatic, you know, he was doing a Davy rant as usual, you know. But the First Minister, she gently walks him through it as usual, you know. And Dross ends up smacking himself in the arse and going to the naughty step himself. Didn't even need to be tell. Next up was Poverty Pie Sarwa. He went on vaccine passports and questioned whether it would be, be functioning in only three weeks till it goes live. The First Minister said it would be ready. Um, a poverty pie Sarwar then started with his jingoism again, didn't he? You know, eh, the prospectus on how this would work is, eh, you know, bars have got bigger cocktail menus and all that crap. You know, and it was pure jingoism. First Minister slaps him right in the arse, tells him to chuck it with the jingoism. It's no working for him. Um, she was kind, she didn't point out the poll. I'm sure she'd read it that morning, you know. But <laughs> she was pretty kind to him, giving him a gentle slap in the boogie and sent him after join Dross on the naughty step. But he uh, third up was Alex Cole Hamilton and the Lib Dems and he went on. Well, bugger the Davy knows. Because Davy was in the truck listening to BBC Radio Scotland. And BBC Radio Scotland cut the coverage right after D Douglas Ross and the uh, Poverty Pies Arwa. So it just shows you even the British state don't see any value in the Lib Dems in Scotland anymore. Because BBC Radio Scotland just cut First Ministers half after we heard from Sarwa and Ross. Hey, even they think the Lib Dems are that irrelevant. They didn't even hang around with First Ministers long enough to hear what they had to say. <laughs> Uh, and when David got home last night, he says, I bet I'd go, I says to myself, I bet I'd go and have a look and see what Cole Hamilton said, and he says, ah well, nah, I'm not going to bother, why should I bother, if the BBC and the rest of Scotland don't give a shite what he had to say, why should Davy? <laughs> 
So this is going to be even easier than with me walking any of us in the chair. Ah, I'm not need to fall out with any of my friends and family because I'm no, I only listen to it on the tranny anyway or go back and walk it, watch it back on YouTube. So if I'm in the, in the truck, I'm only getting the Tories and Labour. Lib Dems are bloody well irrelevant anyway and the Greens are in government which will be the SNP. So if they want to gain a pin, you never just get straight to the first bloody minister. <laughs> Ah, uh, writing about First Ministers is just about to become so bloody easy, it's not true. <laughs> Every now and again, I suppose I'll take a wee look at what Cole Hamilton's going to say just for the comedy value of it, alright? <laughs> but even the BBC couldn't be bothered hanging around to hear what he had to say. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Right, um, uh, moving on. Next up was the debate vote uh, and vote on vaccine passports for a... Um, domestic settings, all right. Dross supposes it because it's the Scottish government that are doing it, so it will be shite. All right. Poverty Price Sarwar opposes it because it's the Scottish government doing it, so it will be shite. Right. Co Hamilton and the Fib Dems, eh, eh, they opposed it out of principle, um, eh, as it eh, is, of course, a liberal, and they are the other liberal party. Right, so the only the only party opposed the the Lib Dems were the only ones opposing on principle. Uh, the Tories they were poor, they were they were opposing because they say the Scottish government's doing it and it's going to be crap. Right, Labour's opposing it because the Scottish government's doing it and it's going to be crap. At least the Lib Dems opposed it in principle, you know. And I have to say, and I'm not going to say this very often, but on this occasion I do agree with the Lib Dems. I'm not pleased about these things either. But as I have explained, the First Minister's been backed into a corner. It's either shut the economy, or shut the nighttime economy in the entertainment sector, or it's COVID passports. You know, um, because it's no practical to set up test centres outside every one of these venues every night, and then have everybody stand outside for half an hour after they get their get their a test to see if they're going to have a negative lateral flow test. So that puts the, the lateral flow test idea out the window, right? Although apparently that's how they're doing it at Transmit this week, weekend. That ought to be interesting. 50,000 people. 50,000 young people. Um, so that ought to be interesting. We'll see what comes out of that. Okay. So as I say, I'm no chuffed for this either, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. A segregating society along any lines isn't a good idea. But... As I say, the first minister was backed into a corner, so that's where we are, where we are. Something has to be done. The government seems to, needs to look to be taking action, you know. Okay, let's move on. Thursday, the BMA released a report saying doctors are burnt out and cutting hours and or leaving the NHS. So, mere bad news for the governments across the whole UK. But here in Scotland, the news circus goes mental. And they turned it into an SNP bad story. Um, even even though the same thing's happening right across the UK, right across the UK, I had a look on the national press, the BBC, Sky, um, a ITV. I had a wee look at their coverage and their output on their websites. And then, you know, it's more or less a blanket silence on the state of things doing that road. But if you really want to know it's the same as what's going on up here, then you go to the local press because they're the ones that are dealing with local in, uh, issues in England. So in England, ambulances are stacked up outside hospitals as well, and England doctors are burnt out as well, and England waiting lists are massive. They were bigger than those anyway, but waiting lists are massive and all. England ambulance service is under pressure, NHS is under pressure, but only in Scotland is it a bloody circus. Only in Scotland is the government getting pelters about it. You don't see that in the national press in England. You don't see that in the national press in Wales. You don't see that in the national press in Northern Ireland. We'll know as much. But here in Scotland, it's an SNP bad story. You know, it's not a pandemic that's causing the problems here in Scotland. It's an SNP bad story. But the rest of the UK, it's a pandemic. Here in Scotland, it's the SNP government. You couldn't make the push up. Well, actually, the day. That's exactly what they're doing, making a push up. Okay, how are we doing for time? Oh. 
<laughs> uh, so, near the stories I wanted to cover for yesterday, and we'll move on to review this morning's papers. As you can imagine, folks, there is a theme in this morning's papers. And uh, the theme is vaccine passports. And there's some really loony statements on the papers today. Right, so let's move on and see what the rags have got to say this morning. The Herald goes with Scotland vaccine passports to start on October 1st. Seems quite general, that one. All right, let's move on to the Scotsman. Anger mounts as Scotland gets vaccine passports. Anger mounts. It's dead easy to go out and find a couple of businesses that are no happy. It's dead easy to go out and find a couple of people that's no happy. The vast, vast, vast majority are shrugging their shoulders and saying they've got to try something. Simple as that. Anger. I think anger's overstating it, eh? Okay, the I has COVID, uh, COVID vaccine passports will be in force within weeks. Another sensible headline. The Scottish Daily Fail, here we go. Here we go, now we're getting to right into gammon territory with us. Uh, the Scottish Daily Fail goes on. SMP um, pass a jab passport disarray. It's not even started yet and it's in disarray. How does that work? How do they know if it's going to be a bloody mess until it starts? How do they know in England? Trust was asked about this. What are you on about? It says they're going to introduce them in England. Ah, but, ah, but, ah, but. And how are they going to do it in England? Ah, but, ah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Tell us yet. Wow. <laughs> ah, unbelievable. But if you think that one's loony, yeah, the loony rag the Express goes with crowd trouble warning as Nats win. A passport vote. So apparently, the loony rag, the gammon feeding rag, the express, is a encouraging violence, inciting riots. The thing hasn't even started yet, and they're talking about crowd trouble. Unbelievable. Um, the Telegraph goes with Oxford jab professor. We don't need uh, mass boosters. Apparently, Professor Dame Sarah Gilbert, who was one of the people who created the AstraZeneca um, vaccines, um, doesn't think there is a need for vast booster um, uh, jab rollouts. Uh, I don't know whether he, she was recommending that it was just uh, uh, um, those who are vulnerable, um, or she was just saying don't need booster jabs, but that seems to be her opinion. Uh, bloody airplanes. Scotland office have nothing to do with it. Today we what? Haven't you mentioned the Scotland office, Rory? Um, hey, majority Scots, eh? And the National, where are we? Aye, that was a, that was a Telegraph. The Times has huge rise in protection from COVID booster jabs. So you've got the Telegraph telling us, Professor Sarah Gilbert telling us we don't need boosters, and then the Times... Um, the Times is telling us there'd be huge benefits to boosters. I think I'd rather go with Professor Sarah Gilbert's point of view. All right. The Rancid has a red alert. Apparently the Red Cross are out at the, the Southern General helping out because the place is swamped. <coughs> with, COVID, um, with COVID cases. Another NHS in crisis story. The difference between this time run and when it was at its peak in the first and the second wave was the first wave, the NHS were fresh, the staff were fresh, the doctors were fresh. It went on for a long time, they were knackered, got it under control, they got a wee bit of respite, second spike. They were already burnt out for the first one. Second spike, they burnt out even more. Third spike, they're absolutely exhausted. Knackered. My heart goes out to them. They've done a wonderful job. And they do need assistance. So having to call on people with the Red Cross in St Andrews, um, a ambulance associate, you know, they have to call these people on. It's no shame. The staff in our NHS are knackered. They need help. They need lots of help. Anybody with any form of qualification at this point in time, even somebody that's a competent first aider would be a help. Because then they could triage, and if it was a minor thing, they could be dealt with a first aider, then they could be sent to a first aider to get bandaged up. I mean, it really is. 
the, the, the staff are knackered. My heart goes out to them. It really does. Right, the National has SNP reach out for Indy appeal to grow yes support. You want to grow their yes support? The answer's quite simple. Just gives a bloody date to work to. Yeah. Uh, majority, uh, the other high line in the National, majority of Scots would vote yes in, in the F2 if it was held anew. All right, and I'm afraid I don't have the star for you today. I looked for it. It wasn't in the usual place where I get my paper review. And even when I went on to the, um, the star's website itself, I couldn't make it where the hell the front page was. So, sorry, folks. They star in the review today. Where are we? So that's what I've got for you. So, um, COVID passports are here. It's a reality. Can't see I'm happy about it. Um, but as I say, they were backed into a corner. They have to be seen to be taking action. And it's, as I say, setting up lateral flow tests outside nightclubs, making everybody take a, a, flow to, a lateral flow test and stand there in a group to see if it's negative or no. Isn't they going to cut it? Because even if one of them shows up to be red, then the nightclub shut down so they ignore it. One of them shows up to be positive. The nightclub would need to be shut down so they just ignore it. So they would. Um, so, vaccine passports is where we're at. And anyway, as I say, it's not practical to put lateral flow test uh, centres outside all these places. How are you going to hold people outside where they get a test for hopping off? You know, especially Scotland's weather. So, we are where we are. Um, I don't think it's a good idea, I honestly don't. I'm not going to kid you on. I don't. And Davey will not be downloading his. I'll not be downloading that but actually vaccine passports. Um... Any indoor large gatherings, Davy's no gone. No, I didn't, Ronnie. I didn't see the SNP making it illegal eh, um, to demonstrate or unlawful to demonstrate outside uh, that we're in Parliament. I'll have a look into that. Send me a link. I find that very difficult to believe. Um, but if you say that's what, what's happened, Ronnie. Um, that's what's happening. Uh, but he, uh, see, we are where we are with the COVID passport things. It's been a, a funny old week. Uh, tax hikes for the poorest, mere restrictions in the form of, uh, well, trying to avoid restrictions in the form of COVID passports. Pretty Patel trying to drown migrants at sea again. <sighs> Thank God it's the weekend and David gets this. Well, he doesn't really get to switch off. I've still got to watch what's going on. <laughs> ah, but let's no end the weekend in the gloom, you know. Ah, Thursday's always cheers David up because you get to watch Dross and uh, Dross and Poverty Pie get their ass scalped and sent to the naughty step. <laughs> on. Oh, by the way, folks, apparently there's a new expression. Um, uh, being used to discipline children and it's not called the naughty step it's called the happy step so if you're naughty now you get sent to the happy step until you're happy so there you have it <laughs> Davey will be sticking with a naughty step if it's alright with you lot <laughs> oh Christ no well the weekend's upon us folks my 30 minutes is uh, almost up so let's get the usual stuff um, thank you all for watching this week and uh, <laughs> Remember, support the independent media. Um, support broadcast in Scotland. Support. That was a good show last night with Chris. Chris McCluskey on it. It was a good show. Um, it's nice to get all the different correspondents on it with their different points of view. Um, so support broadcast in Scotland. Support a Independence Live and the Live Radio. Um, support a Caledon Media, Truth Radio, I Scott Magazine, and the National Newspaper support independent bloggers and bloggers and if they've got a crowdfunder on the go and you can afford to throw a shekel or two in then please do also folks facts but hey uh, i think we'll need to drop the a you need to drop the avoid large gatherings but because i'm going to one tomorrow <laughs> so face coverings and imposed public spaces um a hey. Aye, face comes in closed public spaces, clean hands and surfaces regularly, and uh, observe social distancing if and when you can. Okay, now you lot have a good weekend, and uh, I should be back on Monday, 
but very shortly, Davy will be taking a wee cap. Because uh, Davy's starting to get a wee bit of burnout again. You know? Um, so, I'll announce, I'll, I'll give you plenty of notice when I'm going to a wee cap. I'll wait until Gordon Ross is back for his holidays. I'll give you something to watch when I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, listen, you all look after yourself. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see some of you in Stirling on Saturday. Um, no doubt. And uh, we'll see you on Monday for a review of the weekend's news. Look after each other. Have a nice day.